Hey there, Kingsley here. Thanks for joining me on this video broadcast. Today, we'll be unpacking the topic on how to create an emotionally safe space in your marriage, how to create an emotionally safe space in your marriage. So if you're married and you are looking to strengthen your, your marriage, your relationship, and deepen your connection, you've come to the right place. So in this video, what we're going to do is explore three ways that you can build emotional safety. And while doing that, you can deepen your emotional connection and, and build two very important aspects of our relationships, and that is trust and vulnerability. So being able to, to trust the other, your, your partner, your spouse in the relationship. And, and I would just say simply have trust as that overarching umbrella over the relationship. How do you get trust to be that overarching umbrella in the relationship? And, and how do you become vulnerable, right? Because I believe a safe space creates that opportunity for you to even want to explore being vulnerable because you feel safe enough. Now, emotional safety means creating that environment where both of you, right, both you and your partner feel comfortable expressing yourselves with without fear or judgment, I mean, fear of judgment or, or re, re, um, rejection. Uh, it, it means respecting the space and respecting each other's boundaries and needs and feelings. It means acknowledging what it is your partner is trying to communicate because he or she's trying to say something to you and sometimes it's, it's challenging if you don't have an emotional safe space to be able to hold space for that. Now, so if this is your first time hearing me and is wondering who, I'm, who I'm, I am to be speaking on topics like this one, let me just say I'm Kingsley Grant and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and uh, a certified relationship coach. And I have been married for almost three decades and have heard in my professional world, hundreds, literally hundreds of couples I've spoken to, coached or counseled with all kind of, as you can imagine, all kinds of experiences they're presented with. And so what, what I do of, in, in one sentence is I help couples make marriages happier again, right? So I think that you'll appreciate the fact that I bring to the table this expertise, but also my, my experience as well in my own marriage. Now, before I get into this topic today, let me re also recommend that you listen to my podcast at happiermarriagesecrets.com, happiermarriagesecrets.com. And you also see the blogs that are posted on the website that will help you to continue to deepen this relationship and get more of what I share on these topics, a whole lot more there because I do a weekly show there as well. And there's a number of podcasts that you may not have heard that I want to recommend that you listen to. Now, at the end of this video, I'll share with you how to create, how to get access to some free resources that I have to offer. So let's dive then into today's topic, how to create an emotionally safe space in your marriage. By the way, if you would like to get instant feedback on the state of your marriage and what to do about it, then you need to take the Happier Marriage Assessment Quiz. And you can do that in less than 90 seconds. And you will have immediate an immediate score that kind of tells you, you know, what number your your what category you'll fall into. And then you get a download, downloadable PDF that explains the score and explain the category that you may tend to fall in in your marriage. Now, if this interests you, again, you can take a short quiz at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz, happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz, and the link will be in the description that follows this video. So how do you create an emotionally safe space in your marriage? Now, that is the question, and this video will provide you with, with the answers, obviously. Now, emotional safety, simply put, um, it's, it's feeling secure enough to truly express yourself with someone, your partner, and show up as your more your most authentic self, right? 
it's where you don't have to hold back what you truly feel and need from the relationship. All right, it's where you just can be yourself. And how often I've heard um, a, a couple who may say, you know, I just don't feel like I can be myself in my relationship. Is that you? If that's so, I'd love for you to comment below. If you've ever felt that, ever thought that you don't feel like you can be yourself in your relationship, comment below and let me hear what it is your experience have been. Or just say, you know, I have experienced that myself. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts on that. So here is a first uh, of the three that I believe that um, ideas I want to share around this emotional safety. And that is to establish, which I think is, is very, uh, it makes sense, right? Establish a safe and secure space. Number one, establish a safe and secure space. Now, creating a safe and secure space, as I mentioned, is a prerequisite. It's a must. It's a priority. If you're ever going to be able to build trust and intimacy into your marriage, if you're ever going to be vulnerable and feel like you can be your authentic self and show up as you would like to show up, there's got to be that space where you feel comfortable and safe enough to be that way, right? It's, it's that environment you're going to establish, you and your, your spouse establish where you feel um, about, as I mentioned, comfortable enough to share your thoughts, your feelings, and emotions. How many couples, as I mentioned earlier, don't feel safe enough to want to even talk about the true feelings of their hearts, the true issues on their hearts, their concerns, their fear. It, especially for, for I mean, I, I, you know, I know it happens for, of course, of male and female, but for guys, it's especially because we we fear the idea of seeing being seen less or weak, or you know, um, somehow, as we spoke with this leader, the strong person, and then if we are going to step into a place and we feel the chance that we may not be acknowledged or received well, we're going to be hesitant. So having this safe environment is is a priority for both, of course, both of you. Now, so for example, you have a place where you can have regular check-ins to see how each person is doing, um, sharing your thoughts and your feelings about things and start there. And it could be over a cup of coffee or just on a walk. That could be the safest place for you just to walk side by side. That's tend to be safe because you're not facing each other and somehow misreading certain cues, but if you're walking side by side and just downloading, sharing your thoughts, sharing your fears, sharing your, your what your concerns, um, and then you're actively listening. So when the, once the, your partner is sharing, you have to actively listen. And you have already heard me share about active listening and doing so without any judgment or criticism, or you're giving this person your full attention, right? That's one of the things, ways you can basically go about doing that. And also using healthy communication skills, for example, I statements instead of you statements, instead of saying, you never listen to me, right? You could try saying, um, I feel unheard when we don't talk, when we don't take time to talk, or I feel unheard when we're having a conversation and somehow I don't have a chance to talk, right? You're not saying you never listen to me because people become defensive when they hear that. And so changing the way you approach even that conversation can be a major, um, it can be a major game changer, right? Number two, deepen your emotional connection, right? Go deep, go deep. Now, deepen your emotional con connection um, and building trust and intimacy means understanding your partner's needs and, and feelings, right? And being able to communicate your own needs and your own feelings effectively, Again, which require, like I mentioned before, listening, but it's being able to listen to what's not being said, the tone, the heart, the just the angle from which they're coming from. And you can become curious even to ask questions. And you could even address and say, you know, what I'm hearing is, is sadness, or I'm hearing hurt, or I'm hearing disappoint, disappointment. You can even add that because your, person, your spouse know you're listening and you're picking up on these things that they may not be saying but you are drawing that out of them, right? When you're going deep, you're drawing those things out of them by listening carefully and being curious, asking questions. Tell me a bit more about that. What's that like? You know, empathy, empathizing with them at that point. 
for example, you know, um, you show your your partner is talking about their hobbies or their work, and you want to kind of um, participate by just engaging with them. You know, may uh, punctuations like "Wow, man, I can't believe that. I can't imagine what that's like for you. That must be hard." Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Man, I just can't believe it. Just the nod in your head, kind of shaking your head, paying attention. Those are ways that you're communicating to your partner that you truly are, you're getting, you know, you're, you're um, engaging. Um, so you're showing um, empathy, putting yourself in their shoes and, and just kind of imagining, use your imagination. And that is really true, deeper communication. You're going deeper with your your partner and you're you're connecting at that level like i've said you know heart to heart completes heart to heart completes it connects and so when you're in the head space i say head to head competes you're competing for who who is going to rule the day in their conversation or their opinion whose opinion is going to win but when you speak like this and you're 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 kind of acknowledging you know what i've heard sometimes pushback from this is that kingsley we don't talk that way you know we, we just don't talk that way we didn't grow up talking the way that you're suggesting i'm saying well how is that working out for you how is talking the way you talk have worked out for you is it working well if it's working then keep on doing that but if it's not working you may want to change how you're talking right now before i share with you the third way and um i'd love for, for you to comment and and let me know how your thoughts about what i've just said have you experienced that have you heard that? Have you said that, you know, we don't talk that way. We don't even communicate that way. Well, this might be the time for you to start changing. So comment below and let me hear your thoughts on this. But I'm also going to ask you to do three things, three quick things. And that is, number one, smash the subscribe button, right? Sub subscribe to the show. I believe that is the least you can do for the value that I'm bringing to you uh, to this, effort, this broadcast. Number two, hit the... Um, like button if you like what you heard so far hit the like button and number three um, click on the notification bell so you've been notified of any future releases that are coming out on this this channel and so number three is build trust and vulnerability now this is the third step in building intimacy into your marriage it means being open and honest now if you have a, a very safe environment where you can be open and honest and you don't feel judged or criticized then you're going to feel um, trusting of the environment to be vulnerable and, and share deeper things. And this is where you've got to be so careful that when your partner is getting in this space, is raw, is an open wound. You don't want to add salt to that. You don't want to add anything that brings more pain. It's painful enough for them to be sharing and being so vulnerable. Vulnerability is not easy. Anyone who says vulnerability is easy have not really been vulnerable enough. It's not easy. Now, you can get better at it. You can, you can develop your vulnerability muscle that it becomes easier over time, but it's going to be where both persons mutually create that space for that muscle to be worked out properly. As an example, um, it could be something you're struggling with and you you know something you're afraid of and you want to share that with your partner. So you want to be open and honest about what it is that you're going through. So that relationship provides that context for that. And then you come alongside and you're encouraging your partner by what I said earlier about the punctuations and the way you can lean in to that moment for that, right? Your partner may have needs of you. I shared in a past video about how to be there for your partner in tough times. And you can, you know, see that in um, the videos that I have shared, actually, I'll probably share the link down down below where you can see that video yourself. So you're sharing, you're being there for your partner in, in, in time of need. And it is so important because this also strengthens the relationship. So these three um, ways, I believe, to build deeper connection and intimacy and establish a safe environment, a safe, uh, emotional safe space. Number one, you've got to then, as I said, create that space, create that space. Number two, go deeper, go deeper. Number three, it is about your vulnerability. So it's become, uh, build trust and vulnerability. Now, 
building trust and intimacy into your marriage takes effort and time, as you can just imagine, as you may have experienced in your yourself, but it is worth it. So by following these steps I've outlined, you can create a deeper and, and more meaningful connection with, with your spouse. And, and your relationship will become stronger, more fulfilling, and happier as a result of that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So I'd love to hear your comment below. Let me know what you're thinking about this. And thanks for watching. Before you go, make sure again, like you do those three things, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and click on the notification bell. And remember to listen to the Happier Marriage Secrets podcast by going to happiermarriagesecrets.com slash podcast. And then you'll have a free access to all the episodes that are there. Again, you can see all the links mentioned today in the description below. And also a free gift I have for you will be in the link below. Now, with that said, my friend, let go, let's go and make marriages happier again. Thanks for being here. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video broadcast. Thank you.